Greetings, ladies and metal and welcome to this latest edition of Read TFOS, where I take old stories I've narrated before and update them to modern audio standards. As always, I hope that you enjoy. Diplomacy, written by Pretzel Bomber. Ixtel was not having a good day. Two quizzes, three homework assignments, and now he was staring into the mean eyes of Skulks, the school's resident bully. Ranked by his two loyal goons, Kalk and Stedge, he was walked far out from his walk home towards the city hall. Then they suddenly turned down an alleyway between the grocery store and a weird wall he didn't recognize. It was made of red stones and covered by a weird metal mesh placed over it, although the mesh didn't look like it would do much since all the holes were so big. More than anything, it just looked painful to mess with, which is exactly when he realized why they had brought him here. While Stench and Kalk pinned him to the wall, Skulk scrammed his arm and started grating it against the fence, chewing through his mucus layer in seconds and rubbing the skin beneath it raw. As soon as he tried to scream in pain, Stedge clapped his hand over the mouth while they all laughed. Eventually, they got bored and were about to leave him crying in a heap when Kalk got a weird look on his face. Hey, Skulks, you think we could launch you over the wall? Before Ishtel could get up and run, he was already being held down by Kalk as the other two grabbed hold and pulled him over. The three of them together with the nearby dumpster were enough to get him clear over the wall landing painfully on the hard ground inside. He could still hear them laughing, talking about what would happen to him. My uncle got drunk a while back and jumped over the wall. He came out unconscious and bruised by one of the security guards. Of course he did. It's a human embassy. It's full of killing machines. Only the diplomatic ones. Their laughter didn't help the pain. Nothing was broken. His species was a durable one but that doesn't mean it didn't hurt a lot. Then he heard footsteps walking up to him and looked up to see the biggest human he'd ever seen, wearing a strange uniform with lettering he couldn't read. He had heard the stories at recess. He knew what humans were. They were violent predators, crazed warriors, and single-minded brutes. The only species to invent the nuclear bomb before gunpowder. They would kill someone for simply looking at their cars and would punch through concrete with their bare hands. Or maybe they needed gloves. Nelf was a little vague in that part. Either way, the human walked towards him, would have had a little trouble tearing him in half, with or without gloves, and he waited his death solemnly. Hey kid, you okay? He was talking to him in his own language. He didn't know that they could do that. Don't be scared. Those three are always hanging around outside, chucking whatever they find over the wall. Didn't think they would chuck a person over it, though. Hi. Uh, can you stand? Ichdel rose to his feet and looked up at the human, taller than him by two heads and the scariest he'd ever seen. Uh, am I going to be beaten up? What? No. Is that why they threw you in here? They think we punch people for fun? You, you don't? We don't beat up random people for fun, especially when they're children. What's your name? I Ishtel? I'm Kevin. Nice to meet you, Ishtel. Uh, nice to meet you, too. Should we call your parents? They're probably worried sick by now if you got dragged all the way here. <laughs> yes, please. We have a local phone in the front office. We can call them from there. All of a sudden, the sound of laughter began spilling out from the neighboring alleyway again. Another kid already. This is getting ridiculous. Then Kevin got a strange look in his face. Hey, Ishto, how would you like to help put a stop to this once and for all? As Kalk and Stage pinned full paw to the wall, Skulks was about to start rubbing his arm raw when he heard a voice from down the alley. Hey, Skulks! We looked over to see Ishtal, standing tall and missing the bruises and unconsciousness that he should have had. Well, you managed to get lucky. I'm sure a second throw should do the trick. Abandoning the much younger kid, who immediately ran out the back of the alleyway, the three began walking towards Ishtal, who didn't move. What, are you going to take all three of us alone? You couldn't take a free leg of gold down. This prompted laughter from the trio as they closed in, ready to set a new height record. Oh, I'm not alone. Their laughter suddenly stopped as a human wearing full combat armor stepped into the alley behind Ishtel. Skulks meet Kevin. Kevin, these three are the ones who keep littering on your car. The human didn't speak and simply bared its teeth through its helmet as it snarled. 
Then it began walking towards the kids, who had already began to back up in fear. In response, it put its hands in front of itself and broke all the fingers in one hand with an audible crack without flinching in the slightest. It then began punching its other hand, evidently trying to break the other ones. Stitch was about to faint. Kalk's mucus was turning a funny color, and Skulks needed a new pair of pants. Finally, their brains started functioning once again, and the three ran out the back of the alleyway, not stopping for fear of the human being right behind them. Well, I doubt they'll ever come here again. I doubt they'll even look at me again. Are you sure you won't get in trouble for taking combat armor out of the embassy? It's not combat armor, it's football padding. This is cultural exchange with the local populace. At least, that's what the ambassador said you'll file it as. Thank you, Kevin. No problem, kid. Your parents should be here any minute to pick you up. A few minutes later, Ishtel was in the back of his parents' car, waving goodbye to Kevin as he told him the story. Ishtel was having a good day. End of story. I'd quickly like to thank the T5 peeps. Cold War Boomerwaffen, Severin Cerberus, Bushmaster 177, Henry the Red, Caspar Arnholtz, Cold War Boomerwaffen, Elijah Silvercross, Dragzoon WRE, and Severin Cerberus. Thank you very much.